Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here. Today I want to go over eight ways that you can practice your wedding videography at home. I know a lot of us are stuck at home depending on the state that you live in. I'm in Illinois, so we have a stay at home order issued over the entire state. So I thought it might be a good idea to kind of brainstorm with you some ways that you can continue to grow, improve, and practice your wedding videography so that when we can get back started again, uh, while you may have weddings that are canceled, when they start back up, you're ready to go prepared and you feel good about getting started again. So let's hop right in. So number one is basically what you're already doing right now take in those training resources. So you're on YouTube looking up wedding videography tutorials, things like that. So continue doing that. Maybe join a Facebook group like How to Film Weddings or Wedding Videographers or something like that where you can get into a community and learn from other people who have been in the industry for a long time or whatever it is. I have a beginner's guide to wedding filmmaking as well. I'll link that in the description below. Especially in this time where you may have more time on your hands than you typically do, at least for me, that means there might be more opportunity for you to learn and invest in those types of areas. Okay, number two. So throughout your house, go to different portions and shoot in different types of lighting. So maybe that's even in your backyard or in the woods near your house as long as you're staying safe. So it could be outdoor scenarios and it could be indoor scenarios where you're in a bathroom that has tungsten lighting because sometimes the bride is getting ready under tungsten lighting. If you can change that lighting during a wedding day, cool. If you can't, you have to figure out what's the best way to deal with something like that. So practicing in your house with some tungsten lighting, with maybe some mixed lighting where there's uh, tungsten overhead or fluorescent overhead, and then there's uh, natural light coming in. Is that natural sunlight? Is it cloudy? So just get used to filming in different lighting conditions figure out what you need to do with your camera. Maybe practice with a gray card if you have one, so you can quickly know how to do that. Practice with auto white balance, see how your camera does in different situations on its own. Practice with maybe the automatic settings that you have in your camera where there's, there's tungsten, there's cloudy, there's daylight, there's overcast. That's another good way to practice. Practice with the Kelvin settings. So you can go through all the different ways that you can adjust your white balance for different lighting scenarios so that you're ready during a wedding day to use one of several options that seems best at the time. Getting that practice in now will be really helpful because lighting conditions aren't always ideal during wedding day. So it's good for you to be able to be flexible and pivot and know what to do in certain situations. So being prepared now, good way to spend your time. And along with shooting in different lighting, being able to edit different lighting situations as well is really helpful. So practice your color grading based on the different white balance. Maybe you messed up. So if you make mistakes, learn how maybe you can undo those mistakes in post-production. You never want to rely on that, but having the skills in editing to be able to fix things that maybe you messed up during the day or to enhance things that you did correctly during the day is also another really great way to spend your time, especially if you don't want to be up and about shooting with your camera throughout your house or going outside or anything like that. You can just be in your editing bay with maybe raw footage that you have from the past and you can just learn how to best edit using whatever footage that you have. All right, so number three, practice your focus tracking. So there's a lot of movements in wedding days, people coming down the aisle, different things that you're doing with the couple or the bridal party. And if you struggle with keeping focus as you're filming an event that's just happening before you, you're not able to direct everything, that if it's just happening, you wanna make sure that you are proficient in keeping things in focus. So practice if you live with somebody, have them walk to you and away from you. Or even if you don't live with anyone currently, move your camera towards an object and see how quickly you can move while keeping it in focus. If your camera's not great at autofocus, are you proficient at manual focus? Are there different tricks like maybe shooting at 120 frames per second so that if something does go out of focus, you still have so much room of slow motion where they were in focus. So even if you get just a little sliver of correct focus, if it's slowed down slow enough, maybe that'll be enough for you to have uh, enough in focus. So just little tricks like that. Again, you don't wanna rely on that type of thing, but learning those and knowing those, practicing those at home now, not on the wedding day, not the day before the wedding, but right now while you're at home and maybe you have that extra time, that is a great way to spend your time as well to prepare for your weddings because nailing that focus just makes your wedding films that much more professional and clean uh, when you deliver it to the couple. All right, number four, practice your audio. So with whatever equipment that you have for audio, I have the Tascam DR-10L right here, I have the Rode Video Mic Pro on top of my camera, practicing with that maybe in a uh, wind outside and then inside with air conditioning on. Or maybe you just speak really loudly into the mic and then really quietly 
What does it sound like when you put that into your editing system? What imperfections are there? And what can you do either with your settings or your equipment or in post-production editing that you can minimize those inconsistencies and imperfections so that you can get really clean audio all the time? So put yourself in situations that maybe aren't ideal because wedding days aren't always ideal. And then put yourself also in ideal situations to make sure that you can nail audio every time. So for something like this Tascam, I wanna make sure that I have that dual recording on so you have a higher level and a lower level just in case they're peaking and they're speaking loudly, I have that lower level to fall back on. Those types of things to make sure that you have that correct. Maybe even the way that you put on a lav mic on somebody so to make sure that it's hidden well and it's not rubbing, just coming up with different ways to make sure that you're gonna be able to get audio because sometimes grooms don't wear jackets. What are you gonna do in that particular scenario? So those are some things to learn and experiment through. So practicing your audio, very important, and you can do it from home. Don't think you just have to try to wing it on the wedding day. It's great to kind of get those things set up and ready and prepared while you're at home. All right, number five, practice that camera movement. So if you have trouble keeping your glide cam steady or maybe your gimbal, that if you have an electronic gimbal, just getting that balanced, steady. Do you typically do the same movements all the time? Do you have shaky footage? Do you use handheld but are still trying to figure out the best way to make sure it has a clean, consistent look? So practice that camera movement with the equipment that you have to make sure that you create smooth, clean wedding films. So practice and brainstorm new ways for you to get new types of camera movement in your wedding films. Now's a great time to do that. Okay, number six is to practice your transitions. And I don't mean editing, you know, Final Cut Pro, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, not that type of transition. But instead your transition in the wedding day. So if you're going from a tripod to a glide cam, that's a transition where you're gonna have to make sure that you're ready to slide your camera on the glide cam, maybe in a pinch, maybe in a really stressful situation where you wanna do it quickly. So you wanna be able to be efficient during the wedding day itself. Even going from a part of the day that's 24 frames per second and switching to 60 frames per second. So you wanna make sure that your camera's set up where you can quickly switch between the two, or at the very least being prepared and knowing what you need to do to make that switch as quickly as possible. Another scenario might be shooting in sunlight and then going inside. Like what changes do you need to make to be able to transition from those two locations? So you wanna be prepped to be able to make those types of transitions during the wedding day. Okay, number seven, go back and re-edit one of your past weddings that you've done, or maybe just a different video project that you've worked on in the past and try to restructure it color graded differently. If maybe you even like that color grade, try something different. Maybe the order of different scenes or different clips or the way that you told the story, do it differently. Do it in a different creative way. That could spark some things for the future. So instead, maybe if you do a wedding film that's just like, all right, this is all chronological. I just start from the beginning of the day, go to the end. That's typically what I do. Instead, maybe I have a couple of teaser clips at the beginning and then it goes to black and then it kind of starts throughout the day. So that the beginning of the video is kind of a attention grabber. So you have some, some music and video clips that kind of give a sneak peek into the really cool parts of the day, but don't totally show everything. So it gets people to be like, oh, I wanna see what actually happened. So go through your past weddings and think of creative ways that you could have retold that story or edit it differently. So you're not gonna have any different clips, audio, music, anything like that. Maybe you could switch the music if you want, of course, especially to match a different story or different editing, but just take what's already existing there and re-edit it because if you give two people the same clips and all that information, you're gonna have two totally different weddings. So become that second person. That can stoke some creativity and maybe some ideas for the future. And number eight, last but definitely not least, create something that you like just at home. Maybe it's a B-roll sequence of you cutting vegetables. Maybe it's a funny comedy skit. Maybe you have an interview set up with your spouse and she's telling some type of story from the past or how you met or something like that. While none of these are for wedding filmmaking specifically, it's gonna help you improve in thinking creatively about shooting, editing, directing, storytelling, all of that, which will definitely carry over into wedding filmmaking. So you're improving your skills and the way you think about things and how you're telling different stories that you just want to make and whatever means you want to make it. So that also means you're just having fun. You're doing whatever you want to do. No rules. You can make whatever you want to make. It is something that ends up almost always propelling you forward. 
into things that maybe you just wouldn't have chosen to do, like wedding videography or corporate videography. That's not something that you just thought of in your head to go and create. But then it gives you that creative edge to then go into those projects, having this free flow of thought that you've just come off of making something yourself and so that you can implement new ideas into those types of projects. It reinvigorates that creative aspect of all of us who are making wedding films or even corporate video or short films or whatever that we're doing. Doing stuff that's just fun for us rekindles that love for what we're doing and it also makes us better at what we're doing as well. So I hope even just one of those things you can take advantage of doing during this time of maybe home isolation for you depending on where you're at. And if you like this video, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I have a lot more videos just like this on the channel related both to wedding filmmaking as well as just video creation in general and everything that has to go along with that. So if you're into that type of thing, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching everybody. See y'all in the next video.